So today I'll be trying out a new foundation from the drugstore. This is the Revlon Photo Ready Candid Foundation. This is being sold as a silk enhancing foundation with a flawless natural finish. I picked this up in the shade Buff 120, which is the second to lightest shade available. I don't like the non see-through packaging. It's not really my thing, but I wear the shade Buff in the Revlon Color Stay Foundation. So I figured they would be an exact match. So I picked this up for $18. So I don't know what's going on with the drugstore with their prices, but I mean, we're creeping into high-end territory. $18 for a drugstore foundation is not cheap. Now keep in mind, those are Canadian prices. So we're probably looking at around $14, $15 American. And this foundation is available in 31 shades, which is a huge improvement for drugstore foundations. So on Revlon's website, some of the claims read, this contains anti-pollution, antioxidant, and anti-blue light ingredients, which is interesting. This also contains no oils, parabens, synthetic dyes, or fragrances. This has a creamy smooth texture that goes on like a moisturizer, blends invisibly to even out skin tone, medium buildable coverage with a weightless feel, and keeps skin feeling moisturized all day. So if you're enjoying this video while you're watching it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you wanna know more about the Revlon Candid Foundation and how it applies and wears throughout the day, don't go anywhere, just keep watching. So I've already washed, moisturized, and primed my face. And as always, all the products that I use will be listed in the description box below. So I'm also filming another review today. If you haven't noticed, my hair is a little on the gray side up top. I'm trying out the new Magic Root Precision from L'Oreal. I'll include the link to this up there if you'd like to check it out. So I had a peek at the ingredients and uh, so far I couldn't find anything untowards in here. Like there's no denatured alcohol or anything like that. It is very heavy on the silicones. Uh, the first ingredient after water is something called cyclopentosiloxane, which is just a fancy name for a silicone. After that there's dimethicone, phenyl trimethicone, polymethosiloxia, whatever, it's a silicone. There's a crap ton of silicones in here. And then there's a couple of ingredients that are more skincare ingredients. Um, and there's quite a bit of it actually in here. One is aloe barbadensis leaf extract, which is just another name for aloe vera. And the other is cucumber fruit extract, which um, I don't think I've ever seen that in a foundation before. I've scanned my way through this and I don't see any fragrance. So hopefully it's not hiding hair in disguise. So this is the packaging comes in this little squeezy tube bottle and it comes with a pump, which is awesome because uh, I'm all about keeping bacteria out of my product. I like the idea of the squeezy tube bottle and I like the idea of the pump. I just wish the actual packaging itself was more like the It Cosmetic CC cream where you could actually see through it and see what shade you're buying. So on the right side of my face, I'm going to use my cat Bitten Real Technique sponge. It's seen better days. I really need to start hiding these from the little critters. And on the left side of my face, I'm going to use my CC Skin Perfecting Brush number 702 from It Cosmetics. Start with that. Smells like your typical foundation. Not too paint light, and it doesn't have like any weird perfumes added to it. Seems to be blending out easily. So I know I'm looking a little ghostly right now, but I prefer to match my foundation to my neck because uh, otherwise I end up with a big foundation line happening. But uh, I think the finish so far looks really nice. I don't see any texture. The coverage isn't fabulous. It says the foundation is medium buildable coverage. Okay. So right now I'm liking the finish with the sponge. I'm just gonna lightly go in with the brush and if I see anything weird happening, I'll just go in with the sponge afterwards and try and smooth it out. It's looking a little textury with the brush, so I'm just gonna just smooth that out a bit because I really like the finish on the other side. And I'd like to be symmetrical. Much better. I just got a close up in the mirror and the finish looks beautiful with this. Like there's no texture, there's nothing settling in the fine lines, there's nothing creasing. It doesn't look makeup-y, like it's blending with my skin perfectly. So the coverage says medium buildable. So I'm just gonna lightly touch up some of my problem areas. I have like a little bit of hyperpigmentation on both my cheeks and a teeny tiny bit on my forehead. So I'm just gonna see if this is buildable in those areas. 
Yeah, this pretty much looks the same as it did before. I can still see a little bit of discoloration coming through on my forehead and my cheek area. I can't really say that this is buildable, but the finish looks so nice. Like there's no clinging to dry patches anywhere. There's no texture. My complexion just looks evened out. It doesn't say this is supposed to be matte, but I get up close and it looks very matte. So everything at this point is looking really nice. So I'm gonna go do the rest of my makeup and I'll be right back. Everything is still, whoopsie. I don't know how I did that foundation in the hair. Everything is still looking beautiful. There is absolutely no creasing along my forehead. There is no product settling into my fine line area. The only area that's doing something a little funky, but it's not necessarily the foundation's fault, is right on my upper lip area. I've been dealing with like some crazy chap lips and uh, as a result, I have like some dry skin. Yeah, there's one tiny little like scaly area like right on my upper lip, but that's really not the foundation's fault. The foundation has definitely oxidized. Not super orange, but my face is definitely darker than my neck. But color is at least something that I can work with. So on my eyes, I used the Rimmel Magnifies palette and I just used that matte and that matte there in my crease. And on my lid, I used this like cool tone shimmer color. For blush and bronzer, I used the Physician Formula Butter Blush and Butter Bronzer. I'm also filming a review today for the new Burt's Bees concealer. And if you'd like to check that out, you can click right up there. So for brows, um, I'm also filming a review today for the L'Oreal Unbelievable Brow in the shade Black. And I'm wearing that right now. It is crazy pigmented. Like it took a lot just to get it blended out to that color. It was a little tricky to work with. So far, I'm not sure what I think about it. They're just a little darker than what I'm used to. But if you'd like to watch that review, you can click the card right up there. So I'm gonna go on with my day and I will check in with you in five hours and let you know how this has been holding up. Time is 4.26. Foundation has been on a little over six hours. It still looks so nice. There's no accentuating any texture on my face. Color did deepen a bit, but um, it's still wearable. It's not like bright flaming orange or anything. But as far as the finish is concerned, I love how it looks. Like it looks like skin. It doesn't look makeup-y or cakey. But the increasing around my eyes, my forehead still looks great. I mean, there was a tiny area above my lip that I was a little bit concerned about because I've been experiencing some dryness there from some chapped lips. But even that, I don't know, it doesn't seem to be an issue anymore. As far as how it feels on my skin, it's extremely comfortable. If I wasn't doing this wear test, I would have forgotten completely that I was wearing foundation at all. So that is where we're at right now. I will see you later tonight. So the time is 9.31. I am seriously late with this check-in. I got sucked into the Netflix Ted Bundy documentary. It officially scared the crap out of me and I'll be sleeping with the lights on tonight. But foundation. Um, so I've had this on for 12 hours now and it's just now starting to break apart. So this definitely has some longevity to it. Pretty much completely worn away on my upper lip. Everywhere else looks okay. I mean, there's nothing creasing or settling into fine lines around my eyes and uh, my forehead still looks really good. And like I said earlier, this is an extremely comfortable foundation. Like I don't feel like I have a layer of makeup on my skin and it doesn't feel like it's dehydrating my face. Basically, it's just my upper lip and my chin that is worn away, but everything else still looks really nice considering it's been on my face for 12 hours. There's no creasing or dehydration going on under my eyes. So overall, I am really happy with this one. It just looks like skin. Like it's not accentuating any texture. It doesn't look cakey or makeup-y. The only complaint I have about this foundation is the color. It's a little too dark for me, but I think this would make a great summer shade. So if you have any questions about this product, just leave them in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe before you leave. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.